Welcome to part 2 on how to make a jug edit on Premiere Pro. Just to let you know, there is no music, because copyright, I don't want any issues. So it may be a little tricky to follow, but it should be okay if you're familiar with keyframing in general. Alright, what I'm going to do is grab my clip and drag it directly onto my timeline, keep existing settings, going to remove the audio, so you can just hold alt and click on your audio, press delete on your keyboard, that will get rid of it and keep the clip. When it comes to twixtering clips, like what we're doing right now, on a lower frame rate sequence, you want to make sure there are no missing frames. Anime and TV show clips are almost always going to be at 24 frames per second or 23.976. And since my main sequence is at 20 frames per second, there will be missing frames because it's not matching the original, which is 23.976. So what you need to do is right click, nest it. And then you want to open up that nested sequence, change the frame rate to 23.976, click OK, scale it up, move it around, do what's necessary. So I'm going to scale it up to 105 and move it to the left. Now it's time to get rid of any duplicate frames. So as you can see, these two frames here, if I just zoom in, are identical. You could do this manually, just make a cut and get rid of this frame, repeat with every single duplicate frame. But you can also just right click and head over to speed slash duration and increase the speed. But this depends on the pattern. So first of all, let me actually find the uh, the part that I'm going to be twixtering because that's not the right part. It's going to be from here onwards. So I'm going to make a cut, get rid of all of this. So this is what I'm going to be using. I'll just cut that down. So what you can do is manually get rid of duplicate frames as well as use the speed up method. This clip in particular doesn't actually have many duplicate frames because, well, that's just how it was animated, I guess. But towards the second half of the clip, there are a lot of duplicate frames. So if I show you one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The pattern here is every two frames. There is movement every two frames. So what we need to do is times the speed by two. You can use that method to save time, but since mine's a mixture, I'm going to do mine manually first, so I don't remove any important frames. So I'm just going to go through it. That's a duplicate. Get rid of that. So from this point onwards, the pattern is no longer irregular, meaning what I can do is just times it by two. So I'm going to head over to speed duration. So 100 times two is 200. And that is going to get rid of every single duplicate frame. So just make sure to double check. If you end up with any duplicate frames, you can go back and just remove them. If you don't remove any duplicate frames, then your Twixter is going to look stiff and that means it's bad. Pretty straightforward. So yeah, I am done. Every frame has movement. I also would like to extend it. So what I'm going to do is head over to Project Tab, right click New Item, Adjustment Layer or Black Video, doesn't really matter. Let's go Adjustment Layer. I'm going to click OK and place it next to it, then Extend. Although I don't really think it's that necessary because my clip's going to be short anyway. So I'm going to close out of this. For this example, I'm going to keep my clip around two seconds long. So that's going to be the duration. I'm going to add on Twixter to my nested sequence directly. So Twixter Pro, add it on. And if you'd like to copy my settings, sometimes one works better than the other. So in this case, I think contrast edge enhance is better than delinearize. So I'm going to go for that one. Change the time remap mode to frame number so we can be more precise with our keyframing, frame interp, motion weighted blend, and the warping to forward. I'm just going to move this to the side so it's easier to keyframe. Now, because I don't have any audio to work with, I'm going to place some imaginary markers. So the first one is going to be around 10 frames in, 5, 10, 15 frames ahead, another marker, 5 frames ahead, one more, and that should be it. Let me briefly try and explain what I'm going to do, or at least what I'm trying to vision. So it's going to speed up, and then speed up again, and then go reverse around here, and then speed up, or at least go back to the normal speed. That was really poorly explained. Never do that again. I think it's better if I just show you. So I'm going to keyframe the frame number at the very start. That's going to be zero. I'm going to head to my next marker and I'm going to increase that just by a bit. So let's go for frame eight. 
Then I'm going to head to the next one and increase this a little bit more. In fact, I will try and go to the max. So let's go for, I think 24 is fine. So I'm going to go 24, then head to the next marker. And this is going to be slightly lower. Let's go. Actually, no, I'm going to go even further back, maybe like eight, although it might look a little bit awkward. And then one more at the end. I know there's no marker, but this one is going to go back to 24. So it goes forward, forward again, backwards and then forwards. So if I just play that in real time, that's how it looks. It's not good at the moment because we haven't done our graphing. This is the part where the magic happens. Well, that's if it works, because there are two ways you can do this. You can either use an extension like Smoothify, which is completely free to use at the moment. I will leave a tutorial for this in the description below, a full like in-depth guide on how to use it. They did update it recently, so it might look a little bit different for you, but it still works the same way. And I highly do recommend you get this anyway, because that's one way to graph. But the second way is to do it all manually, which is also fine, but it takes a while. You have to like move things around and it's honestly really inconvenient. So I am not going to be showing you this. Just get Smoothify and learn to use it. Anyways, it's time to apply some graphs. So what I'm going to do is head it between these two keyframes. And the first graph I'm going to apply is this one. So I'm going to press play. Let's see how this looks. I think that's a little bit too quick, so I am going to get rid of it just by clicking on the bin icon and I'm going to try using this graph instead. So just all I've done is pushed that handle forward. I'll press play again. This might be the graph that I'm going to use across most of my keyframes if it looks good. So yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to try it on this one as well. So between these two keyframes and press play. Let's see how this looks. Perfect. This one as well. So this is for the reverse parts. I'm going to press play. Looking good, I think. And don't worry, you can always make changes if you think the Twixer looks bad later on. Just move your playhead between the keyframes and press the bin icon and it's gone like magic. It's amazing. So yeah, I'm just going to add those back. Last one. So this one as well. Add those keyframes and this is the result. Speaking of removing keyframes, I'm actually not a fan of the, this one here. I think it's a little bit too quick. So I am going to remove that and remove this one here. So I am going to spread it out a little, maybe five more frames. Oh, I can't do that. That's, a, that's not really going to work, is it? I mean, I could always extend my layer. So yeah, I'm going to do that. Move that ahead, five, 10 frames ahead, extend and move my keyframe here. So this should hopefully look better. I'm just going to move my marker so I know where the keyframes are. Apply this graph and apply it here as well. So let's take a look at the result. Looks great. So I'm going to nest this again. OK, one very last thing I need to mention. You can save your graphs as presets. Just click on the add icon down here and give it a name. Anyways, that's it for part two. Next, I'm going to show you how to color grade your clips, even though it is entirely optional. It doesn't hurt to share ideas and just showcase a few effects. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.